500 TRX's question, who is the best receiver that we can get from the, at this point? The realistic answer is probably going to be Josiah Trader, the other five-star receiver at Chaminade. Maybe you can kick the tires on somebody like a Ryan Wingo from St. Louis, who's another five-star. Um, but, you know, really importing that kind of talent has not really gone well for Miami recently. Um, but I would say probably in that order, Josiah Trader one, maybe a Ryan Wingo, not even a one, a, like a two on that list beyond that. Then I don't necessarily think that any of the other available options, realistic available options are comparable, but I would say those would be um, the best options that are realistic for Miami at this point. Kylo Ren, Miami Kane. Appreciate you being here. Cam Franklin and Aiden Breland must get recruits i do not believe in such thing as a must get recruits but recruits of that caliber yes absolutely so let's you know let's play it out right and i don't want to poo poo you or anything let's say that we don't get those dudes but we end up with like justin scott and ta cunningham instead at defensive tackle you know those are replacement oh, sorry I'll even make it better for you. We get David Stone and Justin Scott instead, two five stars, but their names are not Cam Franklin or Aiden Breland. I'm smooth. You know what I mean? So I don't necessarily believe that there's a such thing as a must get, but yeah, we need to get the number of guys of the caliber like that. You know, and I, you know, I just gave you five names that I think are maybe not one to one, all interchangeable, but of that elite class, if we get, you know, to think back to the Palmetto five from your, some years ago, I say, Hey, if we get two out of five. That's holding serve. We get three out of five, you know, then you're cooking with fish grease. I think among that group, that cadre that I just mentioned, you know, whether it's uh TA Cunningham, Justin Scott, David Stone, Cam Franklin, Aiden Breland, and there's probably a couple others along the lines, but if we get any two, any two of those, I think that we're good. So, I mean, I, I agree with you that like two to three, elite blue chip defensive tackles absolutely i disagree with the notion that it has to be those names but yeah i mean I, i'm with you that we must in this class have those kind of numbers of that kind of quality and it's really easy to see what the paradigm is in terms of recruiting crystal ball is a two-time national champion offensive lineman himself here at the university of miami coached offensive line his whole paradigm is based upon we're going to punch you in the mouth from whistle to whistle, we're going to get up, we're going to huddle up, we're going to get back to the line, and we're going to do it again because we are bigger and badder and stronger and meaner than you at the line of scrimmage. And what did he do in his first full recruiting class here? Got two of the top four offensive tackles in the country, a couple other blue, st uh, blue chips and very high-end developmental guys, and put all six of those dudes in the same class at the same time at that same position in your full year one, right? Because the first little itty bitty, you know, piece of a class. That's not a full cycle. Last year was a full cycle. So now you really focus on that top end offensive line class last year. Now you're going to, obviously, if we can get a guy like Isendri Afua to add on another blue chip the next year, yeah, but that's not the main focus. What is the main focus? Doing the same kind of numbers with the same kind of talent on the defensive side of the ball. So all of these visit weekends, all of these big time names that we're talking about along the defensive line, you're saying, cool, we did such work to reshape the offensive line room in last year's recruiting class. We're going to continue to augment that. Obviously, we're going to bring in other offensive linemen and things of that nature. But the main number one, A1 focus of this cycle is the defensive line hall. And now you can see that by who we're interested in, who are interested in us, and who we continue to talk to and bring in for visit after visit after visit. So, yeah, I'm definitely with you that we need the numbers, the staff from their action and interactions. They know that we need quality and quantity at the defensive line position. The only part that I personally disagree with, and Kylo Ren, if you're saying, hey, no, it is not the same. We need these actual dudes. I won't fight you. I won't. You, we have a different viewpoint. That's fine. But my viewpoint is I don't necessarily need the exact names, but I need that kind of quality um, and quantity in this class. It is slightly different than that wide receiver, though, because over the course of these low, you know, low last 20 years, when Miami's whiffed on those elite guys, then we've clearly taken a step down in the guys who are going to replace them, with the singular exception of Amon Richards, who unfortunately had to retire medically from 
you know, competing in football. But outside of him, and he was at the top of the board, top of the list that year, every other time that we missed on somebody, it wasn't like, cool, I'm going to put in another guy of that caliber. It was like, damn, now we're going to drop down a clear level. But among the the guys that I think that we're mentioning a defensive tackle, all of them are in that same kind of cadre area. So I'm less impressed or less concerned with the names uh, as opposed to just actually locking down those actual dudes.